For the longest time, so many of us have been kind of of that camp of ABC. Anybody but Cena, especially when it comes to the top spot, especially when it comes to the main event in WWE. And the reason for this is very simple. is because 99.99% .99 of the time, it's the same type of story with the same type of buildup to the same type of match that tells the same lacking type of story that ultimately leads to the same result, Super Cena reigns supreme. It's that simple. That's pretty much the watered-down, vanilla, regurgitated formatting that the WWE has used for John Cena for the past decade now. It's, it's what it is. So we beg for something different out of John Cena. We want something different out of John Cena. We want the WWE to do something different with John Cena. Most importantly of all, not pound him down our throats and shove him up our asses as the undisputed top guy and the never-ending, never-die type of champion. And, you know, I have to say, even though I don't necessarily like the thought of him going over Rusev at WrestleMania 31, at the end of the day, John Cena as the U.S. champion is a whole hell of a lot better than John Cena as the WWE world champion, in my opinion, and I'm sure in a lot of others' opinions as well. And when I look at this, I really start to wonder, will John Cena be a good United States champion? I mean, there's a lot of positives to putting a mid-card title around your arguably top guy in the entire company, that pillar, that bedrock. You know that with the U.S. title, it's going to be featured on TV every single week, which is something that most certainly hasn't happened with the last few U.S. champions. Hell, Ambrose carried it for almost a year, and it never even mattered. It was never even featured in a big way, even when Ambrose was featured on TV. You know the U.S. title is going to be featured each and every single week on TV because John Cena has that belt. You also know because it's Cena and because he has that U.S. title as a result, that title is going to be featured like a big deal every single week, and the champion is also going to be featured like a big deal every single week, going to be presented as a big deal, made to feel like a big deal. Anything involving seen in that U.S. title is going to have a storyline. It is going to have a purpose. It is going to have some type of meaning, whether you necessarily always like where it goes or not. And when you look so often with the tried and true regurgitated bullshit boring ass format that the WWE uses for any belt that is not their world title by and large which is match match guy on commentary match 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 guy on commentary tag match singles match all this other match bullshit you know with Cena you're going to get promo segments you know you're going to get some attempt to try and tell some type of story whatever type of story that's going to be and you know that whatever scene is going to be involved with has some type of purpose significance and meaning you also know that Cena is not going to be chopping well we most certainly know that but seriously when you look at some of the mid-card champions in recent WWE times it's like as soon as they win the title, then they start losing all the time. How is that supposed to help a guy get over his champion? How is that supposed to add prestige or importance and significance to the title when the guy that holds that strap can't win a fucking match, can't win a match clean, or just can't win one period in any way, shape, or form? Well, you know that most certainly won't be a concern with John Cena. You know that he is going to win. You know that he's going to be booked very strongly. You know that that's going to be the case. You also know with Cena having that title that he's going to be wrestling every pay-per-view, so that means most, if not all, pay-per-views, that U.S. title is going to be defended by John Cena, or at least have visibility on those pay-per-views on the WWE Network because he'll be carrying the strap to the ring. Think about how often that U.S. title is either, let's say, on the pre-show or an afterthought, not even on the damn pay-per-view itself. Well, here's Cena. You know pretty much it's guaranteed to be on every single pay-per-view in some way, shape, or form. You also know that Cena as the U.S. champion is going to be wrestling featured matches on said pay-per-views. He's going to be right smack dab as the semi-main event. There might be pay-per-views where he's actually the main event. And that obviously has to help improve the profile and the prestige of the U.S. title because now, again, it is being treated like a big deal on television every week. It's being reinforced at the pay-per-views where it is also being treated by like a big deal. And the champion that holds the title is being made to be a big deal. 
It can also help elevate the profiles of others who are feuding with Cena over that U.S. title. You know, now you're taking a guy that you throw up against Cena. He's not just throwing up against some ham and egger U.S. champion. He's throwing up against John Cena. So he's going to be just like Cena featured in the opening segments of Raw, the one-hour or two-hour main event segments, or the main event segments, going to be featured very highly on the card on pay-per-views, you know, going to be in some big-time spots. There are a lot of things to like, potentially, about the thought of John Cena being a United States champion, and I truly mean that. This is something that on the surface reeks of all types of potential and all types of, frankly, glorious possibilities. And for somebody like me who believes that those mid-card titles should mean something, have to mean something, and that it's ridiculous that the WWE for years has devalued them and made them not mean something when it's too easy to make them mean something, I do have some big-time hopes that Cena can be really good as a U.S. champion and be really good for that U.S. title. However, it just wouldn't be me if I didn't have some concerns. Well, here's the first thing. Is the U.S. title really the best utilization of Cena? You're going from a belt that just flat out really doesn't matter all that much to now it's around the top guy in the company's waist. A second tier title like that, putting him on your top guy, is that all really necessarily the best utilization of Cena? I mean, yeah, you could put that belt on him, and that's fine, but you could also keep him out of the main event and not have to put that second-tier title around him because you would think maybe in a little ways that would drop the profile of Cena a little bit. He goes from wrestling for this world title to now he's carrying around this U.S. title, and he's trying to sell us this bill of goods that it means just as much as that other belt, and we know that's not the case, and that belt's not presented as though that's the case. I also have some concerns, too, about the fact that you know, Daniel Bryan be the IC champion now that Seth Rollins currently is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and meaning that belt's going to be on TV every week as is the champion and at every pay-per-view. Now you've got Cena. You know Daniel Bryan, in the grand scheme of things, is easily bringing up the rear. He's not first. He's not second. He's third. And as a result, when you look at the WWE, you really look at him and you say, hey, they'll book a feud for the world title, they'll book something involving Cena, and then after that, yeah, not so much. You know, is this really going to hurt Daniel Bryan as an IC champion? Is he going to get kind of lost in the shuffle? Is he going to be kind of forgettable here? I personally think he will be for other reasons that have nothing to do at all with Daniel Bryan, as I explained in the last video on this channel. Um, I also have concerns about the fact that Cena is Cena. And at the end of the day, Vince McMahon has a hard-on for this guy. Kevin Dunn has an incredible hard-on for this guy. As a result, there's a very distinct possibility that he's going to be featured over the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. We've seen this shit before. We've seen this story before, where even though Cena's not in the main event, even though, C uh, supposedly, even though Cena's not the champion, he's still featured like he is the champion, like he is the most important guy, and oftentimes he would still end up wrestling in the damn main event anyways. Ask CM Punk how that works out. And now you're talking about Seth Rollins, somebody who's not even established to CM Punk's level, and now you've got John Cena with the U.S. title. There is definitely a chance that a Seth Rollins could be put on the back burner and be made to play a second-tier world champion because Cena can't be featured so poorly because he is now the United States champion. And since Cena has it, that's the most important belt. And that's a legitimate concern is that the U.S. title should be a stepping stone title to the world title. And with a guy like Cena having it, especially if he has it for a long period of time, does that belt become more important than the world title? And as a result, are you actually devaluing your world title by having this mid-card title around John Cena? And then you also have to look at this honestly. Who can legitimately challenge John Cena? I mean, really, honestly. Who could right now truly legitimately challenge John Cena and you can make it work. He's plowed through so many people over the years. It's like any time a new guy comes along, a new guy gets over, he is built up to a certain point so that way they can yank the rug out from under him by having Cena go over him and feeding him to the Cena monster and having Cena destroy him. See Rusev at WrestleMania 30. See Bray Wyatt last year. The shit doesn't go well. Who can legitimately challenge John Cena? And frankly, whoever really benefits from working with John Cena? If it's not a member of the Breakfast Club or somebody like, let's say, Brock Lesnar, who really benefits from working with Cena? Because at the end of the day, it's about Cena. It's about Cena. And, oh yes, it's about Cena.
So you, you really don't, and I know some of you will throw out some names, and you frankly know when you throw some of them out that they're really going to be bullshit. I mean, yeah, you could throw out maybe Roman Reigns, but do you really want to do those face-versus-face -face dynamics of Reigns versus Cena over the U.S. title? That's something that should be saved for, for a Mania match, if nothing else, and if not, maybe a world title match between the two of them. Do you want to blow your load on that, on a U.S. title match? And then the only other thing you might sit there and say is maybe him and Daniel Bryan unifying the belts at SummerSlam. Well, yeah, how's that going to go? I mean, and would ultimately somebody benefit from beating Cena? Because, yes, it might be nice at some point in time. You know eventually Cena's going to have to lose the belt some way unless he loses his smile and he just surrenders it. But you know, if it's not Brock Lesnar in recent years, who really benefits from beating Cena? Because it's always some type of bullshit, some type of excuse, some type of something, some type of whitewash as to why John Cena lost. It just can't be that John Cena lost to the better man on a certain day and da 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 da. It's got to be some type of bullshit. It's got to be some type of excuse. It's always something. So does anybody even really benefit if you have seen on this long reign as U.S. champion and then they've got to win by some hook and crook bullshit? I really think that ultimately this John Cena U.S. title reign could be you know, kind of counterproductive, and here's why I say that. Uh, Cena's going to be a really strong U.S. champion. Maybe the strongest U.S. champion the company has ever had. Maybe the best, in one sense, U.S. champion the company has ever had. But maybe he's too strong to be U.S. champion. And furthermore, he's too strong to be U.S. champion compared to the rest of the talent roster. Because again, who can legitimately challenge him? Who would actually benefit at this point from working with Cena? You know, so yeah, it's great. He's going to be a strong champion. He's going to be booked well in one sense. But what does that really mean? And how does that really help anybody else? Or how does that help the company? Or how does that help the title? Especially once Cena doesn't have it anymore. You're also looking at the thought of, yeah, you're elevating the U.S. title, as I've mentioned before, and that's all fine and good. That's great. I'm all for that. But you could be doing it definitely at the expense of Daniel Bryan in the IC title, and perhaps even Seth Rollins or anybody else as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Does it make sense to sit there and get excited about the possibilities of elevating one title to having to sit there on the flip side and devalue one, if not two of them, including one of them that is supposed to be the more important, much more important title than the U.S. title in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And again, you can talk about different possibilities. You can talk about the fact that he's going to be featured every week, that the belt's going to be featured every week, that they're going to have pay-per-view matches, that Cena will be made to book strong. But again, does anybody really benefit from working with Cena? Because it's always about Cena. It's always about positioning guys to feed him to Cena. And at the end of the day, when you're talking about that mid-card title, as I referenced earlier in the video, that is to be a stepping stone title. That is to be to get this guy ready to go to that next level, to get this guy ready perhaps to go to the main event. Well, if you're never going to put anybody over Cena and you're never really going to give anybody some significant shine over Cena, then what the hell is the real point? And where the hell does anybody really benefit from this? Because even when somebody wins, like I said, it's always going to be some type of excuse, some type of bullshit, and you still have that fear that at some point in time Cena is always going to have to get his. You almost think the only way they could have him lose it at this point in time would be to have him surrender it. So he might be strong, but too strong. He could elevate one belt, and the WWE, consequently, could devalue and de-elevate several other titles. And again, he's in a position where he's supposed to be helping prepare others. He's supposed to be getting ready other guys for the progression of the card. But nobody ever really benefits from working with him, frankly, unless they are already established top guys, because they're always fed to the Cena monster, and he blows through and destroys them. I want John Cena to be a really good U.S. champion, just like I want Daniel Bryan to be an incredible Intercontinental champion. Because I know at the end of the day that if those two guys are meaningful, significant, consequential mid-card champions, that it has no choice, no alternative, but to help out the overall product and make my viewing experience of the WWE a whole lot better. But for different reasons, with Daniel Bryan, it's because of the WWE stupidity. And then with the case of John Cena, well, frankly, in a lot of ways, it's the byproduct of the WWE stupidity when it comes to John Cena that what they've done with them over the past decade will make him kind of a counterproductive U.S. champion where Daniel Bryan will end up being a forgettable IC champion. It's sad, 
I don't want it to be true. Again, I emphasize for the idiots that don't listen, that can't hear, I don't want either one of them to be forgettable or counterproductive. I think they could both be great. I think they should both be great. I'm just not sure that either one of them is going to be, and I'm not sure that John Cena is going to end up being the right type of U.S. champion. 